from Klingster's Last Summer. Klingster. A passionate summer of swift moving life had begun. The hot days, long as they were, flare up and away like burning streamers. The brief sultry moonlit nights were followed by brief sultry rainy nights. Swift as dreams crowded with images, the glittering weeks moved feverishly on. Just back home, after a night walk, Klingso stood on the narrow stone balcony of his studio. Below him, dizzily precipitate, the old terrace gardens dropped away, a densely shadowed tangle of treetops, palms, cedars, chestnuts, Judas trees, red beech and eucalyptus, intertwined with climbing plants, lianas, mysterious. Above the blackness of the trees, the large glossy leaves of the summer magnolias gleamed pallidly. The huge snow-white blossoms half shut among them, large as human heads, pale as moon and ivory. From the massed leafage, penetrating and rousing, a tartly sweet smell of lemons drifted toward him. From some indefinite distance, languorous music winged its way to him. Perhaps a guitar, perhaps a piano. There was no saying. A peacock suddenly cried from a yard, twice, three times, piercing the silver night with the short, angry, wooden tone of its tormented voice, as if the pain of the whole animal world were sounding shrilly, coarsely from the depths. Starlight flowed through the wooded valley, high and deserted, a white chapel, enchanted and old, peered out of the endless forest. In the distance lake, mountains and sky flowed together. Klingster stood on the balcony, coatless, his bare forearms leaning on the iron railing, and with a touch of sullenness, his eyes hot, read the script of the stars against the pale sky and the gentle lucency on the black, lumpy cloud masses of the trees. The peacock reminded him, yes, it was night again, late, and he hoped to go to sleep now, absolutely and at all costs. Perhaps if he could really sleep for several nights in succession, sleep soundly for six or eight hours, he would be able to recover. His eyes would be obedient and patient again, his heart calmer and his temples without pain. But then this summer would be over this crazy flickering summer dream, and along with it a thousand undrunk glasses would be spilled, a thousand unseen loving looks shattered, a thousand irrecoverable pictures extinguished unseen. He laid his forehead and his aching eyes against the cool iron railing. That refreshed him for a moment. In a year, perhaps, or sooner, these eyes would be blind and the fires in his heart extinct. No, no human being could endure his flaming life for long. Not even he could, not even Klingser who had ten lives. Nobody could go on for a long time having all his candles burning day and night, all his volcanoes flaming. Nobody could be ablaze day and night, working feverishly for many hours every day, spending many hours every night in feverish thoughts, forever enjoying, forever creating, forever with all his senses and nerves wide awake and alert. Like a palace behind whose every window music rings out day after day, while night after night a thousand candles twinkle.